And praise the Lord. I hope you guys are doing well today. It's actually late in the day. I've had a long day. Um, but I have something that I've been studying and it's been on my mind. And I just want to share it and see what your thoughts are. If you care to share. you know. Uh, so I recently visited a uh, different denomination of faith that I'd never visited before. And I was actually very surprised that they don't believe in water baptism at all. Yeah. They believe in the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, which is the confessing and understanding the knowledge of Christ, that baptism, not water baptism. Okay. So they don't believe in any kind of water baptism, you know. And that kind of surprised me. Having grown up in a traditional holiness church, yeah. You know, and heard your entire life that you need to be baptized that and um even taught that it was a salvation issue uh it, it surprised me that the, there are denominations that don't believe in water baptism you know um i will say i do agree that it's not a salvation issue so hold on i know that's that a lot of people are like whoa what are you saying hold on <laughs> Hold on. When Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood as that perfect lamb sacrifice for sin. And then he was buried and resurrected from the grave. His blood offering is your salvation. His name and all he endured is your salvation. He saved us from our sins. He's salvation. So... When you say that baptism is salvation, you are taking away value from the name and blood of Jesus Christ. You are saying his name and his blood offering wasn't sufficient to cover your sins. And we don't want to do that. Now, salvation is in the name and the blood. Baptism is a component of his righteousness, which leads to salvation in the days of wrath. Now, I'm going to share this one with you. Okay, so here's some scriptures that I was looking at as to why I'm saying this. First, let's go to Matthew 3, 13 through 15. Then comes Jesus from Galilee to Jordan and to John to be baptized of John. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me. And then Jesus answering said unto him, Let it be so now, for thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. And then John baptized him. So Jesus said, Let it be so now, for it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. So Jesus Christ is even saying there that baptism is a component of righteousness. Righteousness. Now the salvation aspect of it comes into play after all he endures and the cross and the burial and the resurrection. But salvation's in him, not in baptism. If salvation was confused as being in baptism, somebody could say, just baptize me and I'm saved. And if you're not doing it in his name, in his... Uh, be an example of his death, burial, and resurrection, it's worthless. Okay? So salvation's in him. Baptism is righteousness. So in Psalms 106 and 3, the Bible declares that you're blessed if you do righteousness. Uh, Psalms 89 and 16, in his righteousness shall we be exalted. The Lord's righteousness. In Psalms 97 and 2, it says, Righteousness and judgment are the foundation of the Lord's throne. Proverbs 15 and 9, The Lord loves him that follows righteousness. He loves you when you follow and fulfill righteousness. In Proverbs 12 and 28, In the way of righteousness is life, and the pathway thereof there is no death. Now, it's not saying you're saved in it. It's just a component of your salvation and grace in Jesus Christ is 
righteousness. It's life. It's in him. Okay. Um, prophetic scripture. Prophetic scripture brings out some interesting attributes as to what righteousness is. Isaiah 1, verses 26 and 27. It says, when God restores order here on earth, we shall be called the city of righteousness. Righteousness. Isaiah 26 and 9 even says that those who are in Zion will be converts with righteousness. So you'll be converted. Your life and your mannerisms will be converted into one of righteousness. All right? Baptism is part of that. When, they, um, when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Righteousness, okay? Uh, let's see. Isaiah 5 and 16. I like this one. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God who is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Now this prophetic scripture... So when it's talking about the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment. Jesus Christ was exalted in his crucifixion. He was lifted up all right, in judgment because they judged and persecuted and condemned him when they should have been the ones to receive him. They crucified him. And in doing so, the devil thought he won and he was buried and he resurrected in the newness of spiritual life, that rebirth that's promised unto us. And he rose into glory. And he's going to come again in that second coming. All right. So that moment of crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection, that judgment, all of that was when he was exalted. All right. Okay. And God who is holy shall be sanctified. Now, sanctified is a very interesting word because it means to be greatly revered or honored. So God who is holy shall be greatly revered and honored. In righteousness so when you're actually being baptized in the water baptism in that beautiful name Jesus Christ you are showing reverence and honor unto the Lord unto the Lord Almighty you know so you're really saying I respect honor and cherish what you've done for me that you saved me from sin thank you Jesus thank you Jesus okay so let's go to um, Jeremiah 9 and 24. But he that glorieth, glory in this, that he knows and understands me, that I am the Lord that exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight. I delight. So when you fulfill those different uh components of righteousness that are in the word because there's multiple components to righteousness when you fulfill those things you are a delight unto him apple of his eye right so why wouldn't you want to make him happy all right um here's you another one jose 2 and 19 i will betroth thee unto me forever yea i will betroth thee unto me in righteousness in justice in loving kindness and in mercy. So righteousness is even a component of being engaged into the Lord and being the bride of Christ. That's what we are. That's what we want to fulfill. It's like one of those some, uh, ceremonial ritual, that those steps of becoming his chosen bride is to fulfill those things in righteousness, in justice, in loving kindness and in mercies. I definitely want to be the bride of Christ, don't you? But if that component of God in his glory, that you are the bride of Christ, if by chance that understanding is not really with you yet, here's another area as to why righteousness matters. Romans 1, 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So the moment you take a component of righteousness and you say, don't do it, don't need to, we don't share it, you're suppressing truth of God. You are holding people back 
from fulfilling all those things that he delights in. And God's wrath will come against you. Now, that one there is kind of the ouch, scary one. You know, I don't want God's wrath upon me. I've seen enough examples in his word to know how his wrath is. I don't want to be there. And I sure don't want to be someone who doesn't fulfill righteousness because then I'm suppressing truth. I would rather be baptized because God said, let us, or Jesus, let us fulfill all righteousness. So here's the last scripture to consider. Zephani 2 and 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which upheld his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be ye shall be hid in all the days of the Lord's anger. So by fulfilling those different components of righteousness in your life, it is hiding you from the days of wrath and God's anger when he pours out judgment upon the earth. So if we happen to be that generation that's here at the coming of the Lord and he pours out the wrath that you see in Revelations by fulfilling all those components of righteousness that you find within the precious word of God, you are his delight and you are hidden from his anger in those last days. So, I mean, those are things that caught my attention when I was studying on the baptism in the complete immersion in water and pulled out of the water in the name of Jesus Christ. Why do we do it? You know, I'm not going to say salvation. He is my salvation. His name, his sacrifice, his death, burial, and resurrection, my salvation is in him and him alone. But his very declaration at his baptism, salvation is in him, but righteousness, baptism is a component of his righteousness. Righteousness. That righteousness he delights in, the righteousness that establishes his throne, the righteousness that covers us in the days of wrath when he comes again here on earth. And it will be the very name, the city of righteousness, when he's reigning here on earth and that total peace and harmony that we can't wait to see. Because this day and age, I can't wait to see that peace and harmony of God fulfill the earth. And it will be done so in righteousness. And so I, I just find the righteousness component of your walk with Christ to be an interesting one. And there's actually a lot of details and areas to understand what comes to righteousness but in righteousness baptism is one area of righteousness one component of what he delights in so let us be betrothed unto the lord let us be hid in the shadow of his righteousness let us be guided and led to be just like him because it is pleasing to him that we fulfill all righteousness just as he did in his baptism Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, your offering, and your sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a path to follow that we can look at what you did and seek to be like you in everything we do, that we can be in your righteousness and in your salvation, that in the last days when the wrath is poured out in judgment upon them that will not receive you, God, that we will be hid in your blood and in your truth, and that you will have a delight in us and a habitation in us because we dwell in you and all things good. God, thank you so much. We can never praise you enough. We can never exalt you enough. We can never give you enough glory and honor. And, and, and even just being baptized is one step of honoring you for everything, everything you've done for us, and everything you've suffered for us. God is such a simple thing to do. And yet it's such a great honor and respect unto you. Let me reverence and honor my head, my husband, Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. We ask you to go before us and continue to guide us and lead us in all truth and understanding of who you are, that we will forever, ever be the apple of your eye. And we ask these things in your beautiful name, your only name, the only true God of the world and love of our life, Jesus Christ, we pray. And amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I hope you guys found righteousness to be interesting when it comes to water baptism. 
And by all means, look up the scriptures and read them yourself and share some other areas of righteousness because there are more components to being righteous in God. And if we're going to be in a city of righteousness, then we need to learn how to walk and live and rise in the righteousness of the Lord. You know, love you guys, and I'll be talking to you soon. Please, please continue to hold us in prayers. I'm holding you guys in prayers too, and I'll be talking to you soon in Jesus' name. Bye.